Welcome to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, brought to you by Pilma. This podcast helps lead lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Here is your legal marketing expert and host, Ken Hardison. Well, hello, everyone, and this is Ken Hardison here again with another episode of Grow Your Law Firm. And today we have Tanner Jones, who is the Vice President of Business Development with Consult Webs. And I've known Tanner for years and years. Uh, actually, my law firm was using his company, but probably before he was born. I don't know. I, a long time ago. <laughs> not quite. Not quite. But over, over, 20 so, over 20 something years ago. Uh, and, and my firm still uses its consult webs. So I, uh, I, Tanner's my go-to guy if I want the truth about what's going on in the SEO world. Uh, he's actually going to be speaking at our summit uh, May the 16th, and it's going to be talking about AI, artificial intelligence, and marketing, and it's going to be good. So if you hadn't signed up, uh, do so today because we're selling out. But anyway, I want to get back to this because I want to talk about Google Analytics version 4. They call it GA4. And so my question to you, Tanner, is why why is this a big deal or is it is it not a big deal? I mean, you know. I mean, what is it? Why should we be talking about it? Yeah, well, I mean, it's a good question. And, you know, naturally, it's it's seemingly in in your email, probably more often you're hearing it like on interviews like this. Um, and so it's just top of mind. And so marketers are talking mm-hmm. about it and lawyers alike are talking about it because it's been front and center. So the question is, why is it now front and center? We've used Google Analytics for many, many years. Um, Google Analytics, in short, is basically a script that you put on your website. Uh, It's a Google property that essentially assesses how users are interacting on your website, and it gives you useful data uh, so that marketers can continue to take that data, make improvements, and optimize a campaign uh, for the success of a business owner. So Google Analytics, again, been in place for a long time. Well, the reason it's now front and center for a lot of us is that when you sign into your Google Analytics account, you're probably seeing a banner uh, at the very top of that, which is telling you to um, implement GA4, which is Google Analytics 4. It's basically a new iteration. Um, Google Analytics 4, just to be clear, came out back in 2020. So it's not like this is just a brand new um, option for for marketers. Uh, But now the big news in particular is that they're going to sunset the former Google Analytics version. So Universal Analytics or UA is how they referred to that prior Google Analytics platform. Now that they've converted entirely to GA4, they're telling marketers and website owners, now is the time. There is a pending deadline here and you need to go ahead and set up your GA4 account. So that's really why it's being talked about. There is a hard date on it. We'll talk about those dates here in a moment, Ken. Uh, but you asked specifically, why should we care? You know, what? why is this being talked about? Why is it important to lawyers or to marketers alike? And I'd tell you that there are there's some new features that are coming out that are, that are available with GA4 that marketers should absolutely be taking advantage of. And this is, you know, comparing it to the former Universal Analytics. Here are some of the key or notable updates that are included. First and foremost, we're seeing now an event driven data model. So what does that mean? Event driven. I think the big thing to stress is how Google has essentially looked at data within Google Analytics over the years. Previously with Universal Analytics, it was more based on, you could say it was session based. So individual user based as users are coming into your website, analytics, tracking those individual users, how they're navigating through the website, and ultimately how they're deciding or not deciding to choose your business. Well, today with GA4, it's much more event-based tracking. Uh, Event-based being um, like stages of the engagement of your website, certain pages, certain clicks, certain actions they're taking on the website. That's what GA4 is really focusing on with that event-based model or event-driven data model. And so that's important for uh, marketers to understand. Ultimately, we're looking a lot uh, at the same data to a big degree, 
but Google's essentially framing it in a different way. And so it's going to take marketers to essentially pivot their thinking to some degree in terms of how to leverage this the most. But it's really going to allow users in a whole to measure distinct user interactions within the website, like a loading of a particular page. I mentioned the clicking of a link on a certain page, or maybe it's you have downloadable assets on the website. It's going to provide marketers with much more flexibility and even granularity in being able to track user behavior. One thing I'll point out, which kind of coincides with another update, and that's the privacy focused data collection within GA4. This event based model tracking is, is really to help protect the end user. Obviously, we've talked a lot about privacy over the years. It's been, it's been a big topic with uh, certain social media sites uh, potentially not really um, taking care of the entrusted data that they have available to them. And because of that, consumers are aware of it. So Google is obviously taking big leaps toward improving uh, protecting the individual user and their data, specifically the privacy around that. Uh, you may have heard regulations like the GDPR. That's the General Data Protection Regulation. So that's what they're trying to align with, with this uh, privacy-focused data collection. It's really uh, allowing um, marketers to continue to get useful data, um, trying to find the balance, you know, between uh, not enough because they're protecting the user, but um, ultimately finding the balance to where there is something there to give direction to make improvements with a campaign. Ken, the last yes, other, oh, you, you have a question on that? No, go ahead and finish and then I got a question. Sure. sure. I just want to hit on a few other notable updates just for the marketers and the lawyers to know specifically what's what's available to you. Another big piece, which is probably not surprising, machine learning powered insights. I think this is going to be incredibly powerful, especially for potentially novice marketers who struggle with coming up with a, a narrative on what the data is telling them. Uh, the AI-powered AI insights is going to give just powerful predictions in terms of how users are behaving within the website, how they're engaging, and what it actually means so that marketers can make uh, good decisions around the data and ultimately continue to make improvements. An example may be like, you know, as there's more data being collected, we may find that certain blog pages are generating a lot of traffic, but simply never converting. Uh, whereas other pages are converting at a high level, but getting very little traffic. Those types of proactive insights that machine learning powered insights can deliver is potentially game changing for law firms who simply need one good case a year uh, to, to just blow out the profits. And so something like this is something that marketers and lawyers alike need to be taking advantage of. And then Ken, the last two big pieces in terms of new features would be the cross device and cross platform tracking that GA4 offers. Uh, this is really, I believe, much more geared toward the e-commerce uh, marketer, for example, uh, because it's cross uh, referencing or cross tracking between devices going from mobile to desktop, for example but also from within your website to maybe you have an app and how users are engaging between the two. It's allowing it to connect the data and get more insights from that. And then finally, a simplified user interface. And, and I think this is probably one of the more obvious differences when someone steps into the new GA4 interface versus the former universal analytics. It's because it creates much more customization ability uh, for the marketer. This is phenomenal. There's still a ton of data. In fact, it can get extremely complicated for someone who's not as familiar with navigating through Google Analytics. But the beauty of uh, this simplified user interface is that you can only you can customize it to where you're only seeing the data that's important to you and naturally hiding the stuff that isn't. So I spoke a lot there, Ken, but trying to give a good overview. What yeah. questions come to mind on that? Yeah, you know, several. Mm -hmm. I guess the big question is, so is this, uh, giving us more information or less information? I, I would argue it's going to give you more information. Okay. Okay. Uh, but yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. Access to more information, more insights because of how it's set up now. So with this AI, I mean, it's going to tell you, you know, but is it going to tell you what you should do to make, to take advantage of this data? Or see, that's one of the things that, and, and I, I know lawyers, we all have this problem with it, uh, is that you get all these numbers. You, you, know, you see what the deal is, just like email. You see, well, 
getting a lot of opens, but I'm not getting a lot of click throughs, or I'm getting a lot of, like you said, traffic, but I'm not getting conversions. So mm -hmm. the deal is you can have all this information, but if you don't do anything with it, and that's where I see the big problem. I don't know <laughs> about you. They, 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 they just don't know. So is there any books out there or courses that teaches marketers? Hey, when you get in this data, it's nice, but you got to do, you got to interpret it and, and then make some changes, right? It's like somebody, we were talking in our PIMA meeting yesterday. They said, well, you know, our, our average length of view is, is not where we want it to be. I said, well, what, and my big deal is, okay, what can we do? Mm -hmm. I mean, can we make it more interesting? Can we put a video on there? I mean, we, I mean but, but that's just me and I'm not a, I'm not a SEO geek about what I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm not. Well, yeah, yeah, but you don't have to be necessarily. I mean, as long as you're, you're partnering with someone who is in this day in, day out, um, just, just to be, you know, total disclaimer, you, you wouldn't want me even jumping into analytics and trying to make heads or tails of that to a large degree. I, I would want individuals within consult webs in particular, you know, who are in that day in, day out. Uh, who can give me more guidance, but you're asking the right questions, Ken. And that's what I would encourage every lawyer to be asking. Question is not, you know, the, the technical questions related to analytics or what you need to consider. But the bigger question is what just needs to be improved, right? Daily progress, consistent steps forward makes, you know, tremendous long-term impact. And, and the beauty with this type of machine learning is that most marketers out there, let's let's say, let's step back a minute. Most lawyers out there who have hired a marketing company knows very little about what's going on day in, day out, right? They're looking at the high level metrics. They're looking at how many leads came in, how many cases yeah. were signed, what was my cost per case and my return on investment. And that's really all they care about. Um, and that's really all I'm suggesting they should continue to care about. As long as they are talking with their web vendors or whoever it is that's that's managing that Google Analytics account and asking some of the questions that you started off with, you know, what's weak and how can we improve? The beauty with this uh, machine learning insights um, offering within Google Analytics is that it's going to proactively offer many ideas that maybe your marketers, they're too focused over here in this section of the site, or they're too focused on this particular practice area when there is seemingly limitless data available to to you know to review and to make um, heads or tails of and so what this is going to do is it's going to dramatically increase the amount of opportunity to improve now it comes back to action just as you suggested having that information with no action serves the law firm that does not serve the law firm at all right and so an example could be, maybe you just filmed a video and you put it on your motorcycle accident page. Over time, GA4 determines that that motorcycle accident page, its conversion rate, people clicking into the contact form, clicking in the live chat, or clicking the tap to call dramatically spikes by 33% over a 30-day period. Well, in most instances, marketers may just allow that to run on through. They may not go back and reference to see how much that video impacted the conversion rates. Instead, Machine Learning Insights is likely going to uh, proactively deliver the information that this particular page with a video just dramatically spiked conversion rates, and it's recommended to apply it on these five other top-level practice area pages. Very simple example, but one that could serve the firm mightily if they're taking that data and actually taking action. Does that make sense, Ken? Yeah, yeah. You know, in what you're saying with this AI getting involved in this, I'm seeing this in everything. Like I was talking to her, we had a marketing meeting yesterday and they were talking about, well, yeah, Canva now, they've got a they've got an AI version of it. So all these apps, just things that you've been using over the years in different, different, different applications and softwares, mm -hmm. they're bringing in AI to it. Are yeah. you seeing that? In everything, I mean, I'm seeing it everywhere. I mean, mm -hmm. just everybody's grabbing hold of this, right? Well, there, there's no question, and and that's where it's like when you start thinking about where does this end, you know? <laughs> it, yeah, and, I don't think it does. Where where are we going to be in five years? Because the truth is, most people don't. The, the average person out there, they have no idea how AI is impacting their lives day in and day out. Their phones. 
their social media sites that they're they're scrolling through every single day, the Netflix subscription that they're scrolling through every single day or every night. All of these platforms are driven by machine learning, which is a subset of artificial intelligence. What that's it's why doing, they say, yeah, that's mm-hmm. why they say. Oh, well, you'd like this, then maybe you'll like this movie because Correct. you watch because you watch Blacklist, you'll like this. That's it. That's and, AI, and AI, right? That is that's machine learning at its finest. It's learning the individual user and it's creating a a uh, improved user experience every time you use it. The more you use it, the more it improves around you, your preferences, your style, etc. And so, yes, every business out there, every business owner with the with the right mindset. They're going to be looking at ways they can implement machine learning into their own business and operations. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think in the, all this labor problems, all the lawyers are having now finding people that want to work and mm-hmm. you know, they're having to go offshore. But I think, I think AI can also be an answer. I think there's two answers. Uh, that's right. Maxim will talk about that at the summit too. Uh, that's one of the major trends I see, you know, is, and, and uh, I think those are the two things to do about it. I mean, people are having, lawyers are having, I think everybody is. I don't know about consult. I mean, even we, it takes us, you know, six, seven years ago, we could hire somebody within 90 days. Now I've taken six months, mm-hmm. nine months to find the right person because I just refuse to, you know, it's like getting married. I, I refuse to settle for less. <laughs> you know, I'm just not going to do it. And that's that's a thing. Every business owner out there has an opportunity to improve their efficiencies, their operations, their profit margins by taking time to audit what they're currently doing and and really, you know, challenging themselves on what uh, artificial intelligence, chat GPT, what machine learning, whatever that technology is, can implement or be implemented and improve their business. I'll give you an example. We've been aggressively testing chat GPT in a lot of areas of our business. Full disclaimer, and to be totally um, candid with this, we have a strong policy at Consult Webs that we are not producing content for clients using chat GPT without um, you know, significant oversight and overview of reviewing and, and legal reviews, Q&A, and all of that. And that's going to be important. But I will say that just by, you know, these few months of testing, we create a significant amount of content every single month for our clients. In leveraging chat GPT with respect to what are the inputs? What are the things that we need to frame up and, and, and enter into chat GPT for it to create the best possible outcome? Well, long story short, we've already found a way to save over 100 hours a month on labor in terms of creating content order forms that can be produced using the technology that's available today. And, and by saving 100 hours of Consult Web's labor time, we've actually increased the quality of the output and increased the quality of the service that we're delivering for the client. And so truly, both parties are winning from that type of, of, of action on leveraging technology. But again, having the information without action serves you you know, it's it's worthless. It doesn't do anything for you. So you have to take action. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, like, like we've talked before, I mean, and I'm, I'm reading everywhere, like, you know, people say three or five years, people, people I know that are in the know say this stuff's going to go crazy in the next 18 months. It's going to mm-hmm. like, you know, 10 times what you can do now. But you know, the thing you got to watch out for, too, is there's a lot of these hucksters getting out there saying, oh, we got this AI, this. You got to be careful because, you know, well, just there's always people taking advantage of new things, trying to be the best. And mm-hmm. Yeah. It's know, it, it, wor- it worries me. I mean, you know, I was watching, I was reading the Wall Street uh, Journal this morning about Google. That they're actually, they're, this first quarter, their ad spins were down. But I don't think it's because of lawyers. I think it's because of the uh, infl- inflation. People worried about recession, just like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, um, Facebook, Meta, whatever they call themselves now. You know, they laid off people. I mean, yeah, things are tightening up a little bit. Interest rates, up, you know, almost 7%. That's, that's going to tighten things up all the way around. Mm-hmm. And uh, But the, I was reading it today, you know, 
are really concerned about this layout that they've got two think tanks at, at Google and they've combined them. They call it the deep mind now. So that they, they, mm -hmm. they feel like that if they pull their two think tank, you know, their two research people units together to try to help speed up this AI, what they can do with it, uh, which I don't know what they're going to do with it, but it's it's crazy. So mm -hmm. what my take on this, and tell me if I'm wrong, because I could be wrong, but I'm sitting here listening to you. And it, it appears to me that the big winners in this could be the smaller law firms that didn't have the cash flow or the assets to compete with the John Morgans of the world because they can create content like 10 times more efficient. And it seems like with this, with this G4, it's going to tell them what to do. They ain't got to hire a $200,000 guy to come in there and say, you need to do this, this, or this. You know, I'm just thinking, I mean, does that make sense? I, I, I hear where your, where your mind's at. And I would say to a large degree, yeah, it's going to be, um, I, I guess it's going to create more versatility for that smaller advertiser um, it, while, why, while giving them a lot more data, access to data and information to make better decisions. The, the aspect with GA4, it's, it's, you know, while they have cleaned up the user interface and making it look streamlined and maybe um, less full when you first enter it, the reality is that it's a mile deep. And, and that's one of the bigger, um, I would say, reported issues that, that um, marketers uh, and business owners alike have reported on, on the GA4 rollout, and that's the complex implementation factor. It can get really tricky, especially for businesses that have more advanced tracking needs, can make it difficult for businesses really to just get started um, with the GA4 event and conversion tracking, and then naturally taking advantage, full advantage of all of its features. So for a smaller marketer, maybe with less uh, needs or less dynamic campaigns, you know, they can very intuitively uh, jump in and really start leveraging this technology for the better of their campaign. Uh, it's going to require more thought and more setup for the more complex marketer, for sure. So you said there's a sunset. I guess sunset means they're going to just they're going they're going to do away with it. They're going to close down the regular analytics. And you, you won't yeah. have it unless you get G four. So my question is, when is that date, and mm -hmm. what do you have to do if you've already got analytics? Does it just automatically, or you got to make a you got to pull a switch or something. Yep. Yep. All, all good questions and, and worth noting here. It's um, so if you have Google analytics, what you'll want to do is determine when those, when that Google analytics account was set up. If it was set up prior to October, 2020, most of you probably are in that boat. Then, then you have the prior universal analytics account. And so that is what's going to be sunset, the prior universal analytics platform. And so by on July 1st of this year, if you have a universal analytics property, that data is going to stop processing after that date, meaning the data from your website is going to stop feeding in to your analytics account. Um, and that's going to force you, if you haven't done so already, to create a GA4, register a GA4 property. Now, you can absolutely extract the data from your universal analytics account and, and build that into your GA4 account. And so there, there is a process to doing that. I would recommend that you get with your web marketing provider or whoever hosts your website to work through that process if you haven't done so already. But the other final um, deadline will be December 31st, so the last day of this year, 2023. That's when you would essentially lose access to all of that legacy data that has been compiled into Universal Analytics, unless you've taken action to export that data, and so that's why that's why it's such a big topic right now, Ken, is that there is an impending deadline, and it's coming up again, July first. They're going to sunset it. No more data is going to feed into Universal Analytics. That account will still house all prior data up until the last day of this year, at which point it's lost forever if you have not extracted it. So that's that's the urgency. That's the action that marketers need to take if they want to make sure that they're up to date on the analytics side. So if you got somebody doing your SEO or your Google stuff, you need to make sure that they are taking care of this. Yeah, a simple question, you know, just simply reach out to them, email or call. 
ask them, are, is there any further action I need to take to ensure that we're set up for GA4 before July? Very simple question. It'll draw out some accountability in that, make sure that they're working as they should on your behalf. Um, you may also, if you're interested in digging in a little bit more and learning GA4 and what it's all about, ask some deeper questions. Ask how they're going to leverage GA4 to improve their campaign. Uh, ask them how they're going to be assessing uh, the results within GA4 for the campaign. You may even find out, you know, are there any particular custom reporting uh, that you want to set up within Google Analytics? Because that is a that's a wonderful advantage that GA4 offers. I would I would venture to guess that there are going to be a lot of marketing providers out there that may even just completely pivot and start reporting directly out of Google Analytics, which we really haven't seen that over the years. Um, most have leveraged their own um, tracking dashboards, if you will. But that's one huge advantage of the latest interface is that you can customize analytics and reporting however you want, and it's really clean and simple to follow. So is it something I should ask that I didn't ask? Um, you know, one thing I would mention, you know, I talked a little bit about some reported issues, uh, specifically being the complex information for maybe more advanced marketers. Uh, but a couple other things just to be cognizant of, this is still rolling out. While it's been in existence since 2020, there, there's continuous refinements to it. And now that there's going to be this massive push of people leaving universal analytics, creating GA4, I suspect we're probably going to see a lot more maybe data discrepancies that come up. But data discrepancies in particular has been one of the bigger issues, specifically users reporting that there's a discrepancy between the data GA4 is giving them compared to the previous versions of universal analytics that has been supplied. And so it's making it difficult to compare prior data against current data and how that's trending over time. So there's there's some complexity in this transition where the data may not be as clean as we all want it to be until we're all fully on GA4 and rolling forward. So, you know, that's just something to keep in mind. It's not going to be likely a perfect rollout where you're able to um, just have access to just perfect historical data. Right. An another thing too, Ken, is just its limited integrations. Um, naturally, we're living in a world of uh, lots of API connections, basically, you know, um, uh, bolting on uh, certain software to, to mainframe flagship software. It's become a norm for business owners because it's creating efficiencies. An example being like, you know, if you use FileVine, FileVine has a lot of partners and integrations that will bolt on, on to the main fi FileVine software to improve operations. Well, yeah. GA4 ideally will continue to work toward creating more integrations for other platforms to make it easier for businesses to get the com comprehensive view of their overall marketing and advertising performance rather than just leaning on you know purely Google Analytics 4. Yeah. But that's really it. You know, those are the things that you want to I guess the downside of this that we're all experiencing right now, but overall nothing but upside from our stance in terms of how this is going to improve marketers and our ability to uh, get our clients' results. Yeah. Crazy. Got something I want to ask you just because you you might not know the answer if you don't. I, I didn't prepare you for this, so I'm kind of cutting you off guard, catching you off guard here. Yeah. We had this in one of our masterminds last time. The guy says he's struggling because he wants to put more videos on because he thinks that what what his analytics tells him is the videos work better as far as keeping people on his website longer mm -hmm. and getting them engrossed, you know, engaged. But it also is slowing down his speed on like so that and you know, and then if you got good speed of loading up everything, then that kind of hurts you with the Google rankings, right? Yeah. What's the mm -hmm. answer? Is there some software out there or something or yeah, it, it, that's somewhat of a tough question because what I would want to know is uh, I'd, I'd like to find out how he has the videos embedded on the website. Okay. Um, oftentimes we will host the video on YouTube and 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 then embed the YouTube thumbnail within the body of the page. And okay. then that that way it, the, the video is not actually 
rested within the website and having to load every time someone clicks into that web page. A lot of times that will dr dr drag down the speed of the website significantly. Um, for those of you who may not know how to even test the speed of your site, just simply Google Google Page Speed Insights or Google Page Speed and click that first link and enter your domain. And it'll tell you it, it's a scale of zero to 100 how fast your website is loading for both mobile and desktop. If it's what, loading, what should it be? What should yeah, it be? If it's loading under a score of 70, then, then you absolutely should be asking questions to your web marketing provider. Now, certainly there are some fluctuations, certain things break, uh, certain things change on the website and you may see dips, but it's important that your web marketing provider is keeping a close eye on this. Um, one thing like at Consult Webs, we actually have a program set up to where if any one of our client sites drop below a 70, we're immediately notified. Our support team receives an immediate ticket to assess it and to correct it. Uh, not everyone has that, you know, checks and balances in place. And so there could be instances of a site dropping below 70, maybe getting in the 30s and 40s uh, of a speed score and and not be aware of it for five, six plus months. And yeah, you can imagine what kind of search impact that has and ultimately the dollar impact it has on a business. Yeah. You know, that goes back to the old fashioned deal. I mean, I used to, uh, it's got nothing to do with websites. I used to make sure all my numbers, different numbers I had out there, whether my marketing materials, somebody called it every month in the firm just to make sure the number was still working. Yeah. And I and, and also fill out the forms on the website every month just to make sure that they're going to us because things happen, right? That's it. I mean, you, I, I, you know, it just is. Well, we've seen it. And, and I, I'm sure, you know, those listening probably have experienced a live chat script breaking and your live chat dropping off and it's and it being off your website for weeks before you or your vendor notice it. Um, the same thing is true. You know, if, if we started um, auditing all of our listeners websites and, and we were auditing it from the standpoint of how many sites went down over the last 30 days. What that means is it just completely drops off the server. Somebody who goes to your domain, it, they just land on a dead page because it's not showing up. Most would not believe that the vast majority of sites are going down every single month. Um, most have absolutely no idea because these are all largely driven by the server and who you're using to host the website. And it may go down for four or five hours one night and you never even be notified. Yeah. And so Consult Webs, actually, we have a software called Law Eval. And one of the modules that we have built over the years is around monitoring monitoring and security of a website. Most law firm websites out there have hundreds, literally hundreds of different channels or connections that are driving leads. It could be a phone number like you mentioned. There may be lawyers out there that have over 100 phone numbers listed out there on the online directories, different traditional advertisements. There's live chat, as I mentioned. There are other scripts on the website. Um, phone numbers, all of these things are being evaluated by our monitoring system um, so that if anything goes down, including the website, you as the lawyer are no immediately notified. And then the vendor, in, in our case, consult webs would be notified to correct it. Um, but what it also does is gives you historical data. Uh, so there's transparency in terms of, you know, you can look back and see over the last 30 days, I had 100% uptime with my website or conversely 60% uptime, meaning 40% of the time over the last 30 days, my website was down. Most lawyers have no idea. And that's so important, Ken, for firms to be considering, you know, all of these connections that are associated with their website and their brand. One final question has got nothing to do with G4. You know, are you seeing, I mean, there's this new chat Apparatus. I mean, there's a lot of different new things, but I just noticed Intaker, uh, mm -hmm. you know, where you do the video uh, instead of just having a picture of somebody static, it's actually a video of you talking and then it says, you know, click here or whatever. Are any of your clients using that? And if they are, are they seeing better engagement or, or better conversion or what? You get any feedback on that? Yeah. And yeah, we love Intaker. Uh, we've, we've used, 
uh, virtually a whole, all of the chat platforms out there, uh, Apex, Engage, these are some of the, uh, I guess, staple chat companies that have been around in existence for a long time. Um, most of those platforms are charging on a per lead basis. Um, and and we, we find that just implementing live chat, you know, not being, um, not specifically speaking to any individual company, but just simply adding live chat will often increase your overall conversions on your website by over 15%. Um, and we've seen it even higher in certain instances. So it's a no brainer live chat works. So then the question is, how do you refine that? How do you make it better? And and I believe in Taker, they're on to something. Um, well, obviously, video is powerful. And, and we're I will say this, we're using it on, on Pilma yep. and, and we're converting better. So I, I just, I, that's why I wanted to ask you because mm -hmm. I know it's doing better for us, but I wonder if it's doing better, but we're B2B. Business to business. I wonder if it's doing better for business to consumer. Yeah, the full disclaimer on my end is that I'm not looking at the data right now, so I don't know, you know, what the percentage conversion differences are. Um, but I do know I have seen several studies that indicate Intaker has converted at a higher level um, and generated a higher overarching number of leads. And that's the big thing I want to stress is that if you have leads coming through the telephone through your contact forms and through live chat, just simply implementing live chat and comparing prior live chat volume is not the way you should look at it. Look at your overarching lead count because a lot of times live chat will uh, eat in to the overall conversions because it's convenient and that's what users like. But so monitor your overall conversions and track that conversion percentage. Um, that's a good way of doing it. But to come back full circle on Intaker, the big point I want to stress is that the lawyers that are listening on this call or on this interview, you probably know the power of video. You've heard it being talked about. But going back to the earlier topic about action, if you haven't taken action on video, you are missing out right now. You are losing market share if you're not leveraging video in your marketing. Intaker has proven that with their dynamic uh, pop up with a live chat, which shows a talking head of one of the managing attorneys or someone from the firm, and it's extremely interactive. As soon as that user's engaged and seeing that person face-to-face -face on the screen, you've got them locked in from a conversion standpoint, and that, that's why it's been so powerful. So again, the question you should ask yourself is, what are some other ways that we can be leveraging video in our marketing to increase case counts? Yeah. Well, listen, uh, this has been great, as usual. I always enjoy talking to you, picking your brain. Thank so you, if anybody if anybody wants to follow up with you, ask more questions, whatever, I know you're always available. How can they get up with you, Tanner? Sure. Well, first and foremost, come to the Pilma Summit down in New Orleans. Um, it's going to be an awesome summit. I, I, I think it's gearing up to be one of the best ones yet, especially with the amount of speakers and the topics being covered. I'll be there and would love to sit down and speak to you there. Um, but otherwise, just visit our website, consultwebs.com. We are offering a free marketing blueprint, and so that's that's free. You know, no no strings attached. Come come get access to that again. Consultwebs.com, and you can reach me through the website as well. All right, good deal. Thank you so much, Tanner, and uh, thank you, audience, for being here and supporting us. And uh, we love a review from you. I know, this is the first time I've ever. I, I preach it to my lawyers. Get your Google reviews. Get your Google. Well, well, they tell me that uh, in my marketing meeting that I need to get more reviews for this uh, podcast. Uh, so I'm going to ask for one. Whatever whatever form, platform you're on, you can give us a review. Uh, and if you don't like it, just, just call me and tell me, and I'll try to make it better. But anyway, until next time, this is Ken Hardison dedicated to your success. Thanks. You have been listening to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, the podcast that leads lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Go to growyourlawfirm.com to find more ways to market and manage your law firm. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcasts.